Hassan has several years of experience, research experience, specializing in signal processing, computer vision, uh, big data analytics, machine learning, and explainable AI. Uh, so he's currently working as a tech lead and a researcher at, as a, and a researcher at the Transpar Transparent Ocean Group in the, in the, in the National Science Center. Uh, and his work involves developing AI systems uh, that use optical, infrared, stereo, and sonar sensors. So he works on these data, these kinds of data. Uh, he's also you know, engaging with several research uh, interactions and partnerships with uh, China, USA, and, and uh, uh, working on, uh, especially uh, focusing on net zero, you know, material, material technology or net zero targets. So who would you? Thank you. Uh, thanks for having me here uh, today. I'm Junaid. Uh, actually, our team lead, uh, Jin Chang, should be here, but he's on annual leave, so I'm actually presenting on behalf of our team. And the work I'm going to present is not my solo work, it's about the whole lab work. Okay? So we are Transparent Ocean Group, actually working in National Sasi Center at this moment. And uh, this is led by Professor Ren. So, uh, that's our group, and that's his email address. So if you are interested in any sort of work, you can actually contact us by this email. Okay, okay. So yeah, let's first talk about our group. It's a big group. So that's Professor Ray, that's me. That's Dr. Ma, that's Inha and Hamid. There's are two core members of the team, actually. So there is of this group, and others are actually our exchange researcher who are right now with us at National Science Center from China. So that's our whole group, and we work together, and there are past members who contributed to the group of outcomes, and we also present and talk about those outcomes as well today. And these are our collaborators. Uh, most of the time we collaborate with a lot of groups, uh, internationally, uh, nationally, so those are some. And let's talk about first some of the research area we work. So one of the core research area Professor Ren have developed so far was hydrospectral imaging. So it's about multimodal data fusion, multimodal data processing, it's kind of a service. So we quite agree in multimodal data sensing and fusion. So the sensing terms comes. And then also condition measuring and predictive maintenance after that. Those are kind of the CBM thing. And I, my core expertise is that part because before joining here, back five years, I worked in South Korea on this particular topic, mostly worked on ethical AI usage and transparent AI for industrial uh, digital transition. And after that, actually at this moment at National Safety Center, we are focusing on this transparent ocean thing actually. So leveraging with all the expertise, we are actually trying to demonstrate the capabilities of underwater inspection by treating some sort of 3D point cloud data uh, for underwater inspection in real time, trying to solve this problem, but not see it's difficult, not that capacity. And also, the city point cloud, yeah, I have talked about that. And like few things we actually, while doing this thing, because we are mostly like data-driven group, we work on data, AI, uh, this type of thing. So we actually talked a lot about data quality, data enhancement, data assessment, this sort of stuff. So enhancement you see in this image, data enhanced, it, it's just a simple representation, and also feature extraction. And then this artificial intelligence thing is there, so I don't have to explain a lot of the chat GPT, you all know, like everybody knows about artificial intelligence a lot, right? Even my mother other day was talking about me, uh, with me and talking about artificial intelligence, <laughs> she's like 60 more, right? So yeah, she knows about that, and as well, now, uh, another part is we are actually continuously working with this underwater inspection. Mostly like a lot of research are there already and uh, thanks to Professor for the nice talk because I had a chance to uh, explore that with Holocam and I talked with Andy already. So I sent a couple of emails. So it's a great research. So it, it actually got my interest. So we are actually trying to uh, explore the possibilities of image detection and segmentation of underwater scenario, but there are a lot of challenges actually. Underwater data, you cannot, white will see a lot of corrosions are there. It's dark, right? 
And then also like from that, we try to create three point cloud. So that's a big challenging part. So now let's talk about some of the projects, okay? So this project is actually OMA project. It was uh, built with uh, uh, some, uh, I think, Naval Office of Naval Research. So this was done prior I joined to the group uh, by Dr. Irinian. He is not uh, with us uh, in the group right now. He's now working at University of Dundee as a lecturer. So in this work, actually, what we did mostly, uh, we collected the underwater images based on some sort of camera settings and laser as well because uh, the green laser right now is available. So with the green laser, we try to illuminate the scene and try to collect the data. Then we try to enhance the data uh, in a much better way. And then also we try to extract the images from, uh, the features from there and then try to develop some sort of algorithm, but it should be faster actually, because other than that real-time deployment would be difficult. So here we actually explore a lot of advanced model like Foster CNN, ELO, and different versions and Master CNN as well. And from there you can see some of the results. So there are different metrics and methods over there. I'm not going to so much details about that, but you can see the differences of improvement of these sort of images over there. So this slide actually talks about the image enhancement mostly. And then if we go to the next slide, you can see the image enhancement and object detection as well. So here is seen with ELO without image enhancement and ELO with image enhancement. So you see like when image got enhanced, the visibility increased to the data and you know like data quality is very important when you try to develop some sort of machine learning or deep learning model. That's quite important. So we try to focus on that part, improve the data quality, so make the training much, much better and we get better accuracy in terms of detection. So it's not about like always getting 100% accuracy because in the POC you can get 100% no problem, but you deploy to the North Sea, the accuracy could drop uh, 50%. That's quite obvious because unless the data and the training process is well thought. So uh, this was our experiment uh, we're done back in our National Safety Center. So here in this experiment, we actually tried to create some sort of experimental environment in a small mini pool. We put a lot of object over there and you can see from the visual uh, slides like how the results look like. So it's quite interesting and we got really improvement by with our Python. So now actually I'm gonna talk about the CSense project a bit. So uh, this project I'm actually actively involved and thanks to Hamid, Big, Inha, whoever here presented uh, 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 here, and also Professor Ben and our other members who are actually every day contributing to this project, including me, of course. So in this project, our idea is uh, trying to capture the 3D point cloud data from subsea environment from multimodality of sensing. <laughs> so what sensing technology we are right now relying on a stereo vision. So our idea was from a stereo vision, we could capture the 3D information from the uh, image itself, but technically it's very difficult. So we tried to explore some alternative over there. So we tried to explore the possibilities of sonar sensing over there. Uh, but at this moment, thanks to Dr. Soma and the Harji School of Engineering, uh, in this project we are collaborating with them as well, and also the partner is Oceaneering. So, uh, we are actually at this moment uh, using that uh, Ping 360 sonar is basically a navigation sonar. So yeah, it's purpose is navigating, right? So it's not imaging sonars, but the idea was from the navigating navigation sonar, if we can get the depth, so with image we get X and Y, and if the stereo vision camera have missing some information over there, we can actually intrude this information by this sonar sensor. But there is some sort of technical and sensor limitations, we have to actually agree on those things. Because first of all, this is navigation sonar, so it cannot give us certain images form, right? So we cannot match those two things like the research paper actually suggests to do so. So the problem is unless that's the imaging sonar, we cannot tell anything at this moment. However, the multimodal data fusion now go into some different direction because there is two separate modality running on parallel to each other and then one is complementing other modality 
that's how we are right now trying to improve the decision making process and the end, and we are actually planning to uh, run the proof of concept on raw space system with jetson nano or uh, jetson javier any kind of version and also uh, from the struct like side our another partner actually they are trying to develop a haptic sensing robot hack so what it does actually it will help this vision system or 3d system will help the ROV operator to see and those things under the water and then they will try to navigate that with some kind of haptic feedback to their joystick over there in the control system and then the haptic sensor or haptic hand will go and touch that object but however when you touch that object the data will feed into our system back as well and that will create more information generate more information in terms of 3d point class generation that's the idea we are in the middle of the project at this moment so we are trying to explore that part so two independent part are going two different uh, research group one is in the struck back side and we are actually dealing with multimodal sensing with the stereo vision and so on so this one is done by hamid hamid is here it's good if you could present here but thanks very for presenting that uh, preparing the slide so it is actually data enhancement so this method called ICAM. So I'm not going to explain further details, but in general, most of this machine learning or AI algorithm, if you see and read the papers, the idea is extract features somehow, improve the feature, and if the feature is not able to extractable, try to improve the image or the data itself, and then extract those, right? So that, how many did? and then did some kind of color correction over there because in underwater color is a very important thing because if you look in physics perspective the color spectrum band in underwater was differently than the normal world right so that's the difference over there and you can see the uh, results over there is quite impressive right and it, it, it got accepted in neurocomputing recently and a lot of companies got interested in that it's a very big thing while you are doing a phd and credit goes to Hamid actually so it's quite interesting actually and and uh, you see the uh, performance matrix over there i'm not going to talk about much details into those uh, but yeah those are the matrix over there and uh, this is in the paper second we talk about this data quality assessment so that's another word so one part is we improve the data but then we need to actually assess the quality but how do you assess the quality that's a good question because the data set already available for data quality assessment so the assessment mechanism is quite uh, hectic because they all have to give certain data or certain images to certain group of expert people or general people and they have to rate those things if their eyesight vision condition is very good so then you, you have to rely for this psychological uh, insight or this type of medical professionals right but that is not possible so we are relying on some sort of public data set to take that as a benchmark and try to make certain algorithm based on their given criteria or quality index matrix or sometimes even propose something new and try to compare our results with that and whether we are getting some good accuracy or not. So yeah, these things are also getting good accuracy over here. So I'm not going to much details in that, I'm just uh, giving a brief overview over there because there's a lot to do. So another thing is, this is quite important. So optical part is over there. So in the optical part, studio vision is a part of optics. So these are two cameras over there and then you correlate those things. So we have to talk about optical part and not the studio directly because fundamentally it's the optical RGB camera. If you can use to watch that, that's different. So now another one is data enhancement of sonar. This is quite interesting, right? So. I told like we use the navigation sonar, but in terms of the data accessibility, we are now getting actually some sort of imaging sonar data publicly available, but some data said we don't know actually the exact source, how they prepare the data, there are a lot of questions over there. And when the software actually collects the data, transform the data, they actually represent the data set like these images, right? But it's not actually fundamentally images, it's kind of sound waves. You send some sound, you're receiving that sound, the acoustic pulses, so that's different mechanism. So in the hologram also, you have seen from the laser wave, it's an image. But if we treat the sonar data as an image, will that be correct? We are not sure though, because people in the research papers, when we are exploring, trying to treat those 
Theta has an image, but fundamentally we don't believe so. And that is also not actually solving our purpose because we are interested from the sonar to get the depth. So that's quite important question to be asked. However, we are relying on the public data set, we know, and we are trying to enhance the data as well because sonar data which are available is not quite good. So we also again build some kind of model over there based on some available research and we got quite improvement. These are the matrix, so matrix tells us the good numbers, yeah, and that they improved, right? And this is the visual uh, output of the data. So you can see the data improved quite a lot, right? And it, it, it's going to the, towards the ground truth, whatever research has played. So we are not talking about sanity of any of the work, but we have to rely on uh, them. Now, uh, let's see some other data quality assessment. We talked about data quality enhancement and then you know the pipeline already, we have to assess the quality, so we did that. And thanks to Hamid as well, again, uh, he's actually doing this sort of work mostly, and I also try to contribute in the sonar part as well, and Dr. Soma as well, thanks to thanks for that, for having this thing. Uh, so uh, now let's go to our experimental set of work. We get those with the public data set, we try to build our own software the algorithms and everything based on that, knowledge based on that, right? So let's talk about our experimental setup. So we currently, relying on a very small experimental set of control environment. So this is a small, actually a factory. From outside, there will be a lot of noises, right? So we try to cover the pool with some kind of acoustic foam to reduce the noise. In real world, that is not the case, we know. But we try to understand how much signal noise ratio this foam can give us to reduce, understand a certain parameter. And we also placed some kind of object over there. I should mention that object material strength or body strength actually matters for sonar when we collect the data. So it's sort of a scattered lot of in lot of ways. So that's a quite be challenging because when you send the sonar signal over there, let me give an example. Here is a bended pipe. And then here is that vendor five image. Can you tell this is a vendor five? It's not possible, it's not like image, right? So that's a quite a bit challenging over there, okay? However, we try to manage to uh, actually uh, design that uh, kind of denoising method. So other teams got denoised and we got that object over there. We tell that prompt based segmentation. This paper is still under review. Uh, and then we did some sort of distance measurement from there as well, these are the results. And some kind of work we did on a stereo vision, so it's still an ongoing. Uh, Ali started the work and then Hamid carried for that work as well. And I'm also with that, so we're trying to understand the sonar. And you see that depth information quite missing from there, right? So that's quite different. Now. I'll talk about some kind of depth improvements. We use depth editing model to improve that images over there. And also some sort of 3D representation. So that was the goal, but some information are missing from there. So Sona should give those information, but we are not sure quite well yet. But we are actually trying to develop those things. And some kind of under, uh, underwater object detection is here as well. So we try to develop some kind of object detection and object segmentation model as well. And then this is a video feed. Actually, you can see real-time anode detection model. Again, uh, this is from Hamid's, uh, some of the work. So I'm presenting on behalf. So this is a quite good work, but image enhancement should be there to make for the both of the live video feed very better. And for this is the underwater uh, inspection plan, actually, you know, like we told about this point cloud detection, and then actually the end goal should be digital twin. That's the focus of our center. And that's what we are trying to do as a service, maybe. So let's see. And then uh, we also try to do some kind of privacy protection automatic indexing. So this is kind of, in short, if I want to tell some sort of data, had a lot of information on top of that. So when industry is willing to share us the data, there are a lot of information and try to remove this information, right? 
and then if we can build a predator learning platform over there so people can access the data but nobody gets any information that's one of the idea over there and also we actually work on uh, hyperspectral imaging i first told and thank dr ping uh, for that i'm not going into further details of hyperspectral imaging but it's important actually for offshore energy infrastructure uh, condition measuring from hyperspectral images from satellite data. So it's an integrated part of the subsea environment, right? So uh, this is uh, Dr. Pete's paper. I'm not explaining the hyperspectral imaging system because the, today's talk idea was about transparent ocean. However, at National Surface Center, we have a HSI lab, hyperspectral uh, imaging lab, and uh, there we do all sorts of testing. Uh, so if you're interested, please drop us an email. We are happy to talk. Uh, Dr. Ping is the right person to talk about that. Uh, so yeah, and that's from me. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Jaren. Uh, so, for the questions, you can discuss with.